Hi everybody and welcome back to episode two of Return to Flight with my 30 year old Pitts S1E. Now in episode one, I gave you some information about the Pitts and I showed you a little bit of, or some of the things that I was doing to bring this airplane back up to flying condition. In this episode, I'll give you a little bit more information about the airplane and I'm gonna show you a little bit more about what I'm doing to not restore, but to bring this airplane up to safe flying condition. Finally, at the end of the video, I'll talk about some of the options I have with this airplane. Let's start off with the battery cables. To do that, we will open up the canopy and take a peek inside. The battery is located behind the seat. The seat is removed right now, but you can see they have these big red battery cables that travel all the way up to the, the bottom of the front seat, or the front of the bottom seat. And they've got this massive charge receptacle up there, which is heavy and unnecessary. Because I don't need this charge receptacle in the airplane and it's heavy, I have removed it. And to give you an idea of how heavy it is, let's put it on a scale, 14 and a half ounces. So it is almost a pound. And then you figure with the, the two battery cables that went to it, you know, we probably removed a pound or just over a pound from the airplane. Not real significant, but it's extra weight that I don't need. Now removing that charge receptacle led to another issue that I wanted to fix. What I noticed when I removed these battery cables is that they are all attached with a quarter inch bolt. This is an AN4 bolt. And every battery cable has a terminal on the end that is not sized correctly for this bolt. In this picture, you can see what I'm referring to. Look how big the hole is in that terminal compared to the bolt. That is not how you want your battery cables attached. I have some extra four gauge wire left over from my Zenith Super Duty project and I decided to replace all of the battery cables. Here's an example of one of the battery cables that I made. Obviously the white one is the new one and I was also able to make it just a little bit shorter which makes it fit better. And now with the new terminal on the end, you can see it is sized properly for the bolt and this looks and works much better than this. Looking in the back of the airplane now, you can see I have the brand new starter solenoid on there. You can see my new battery cables that I made. This one right here goes to ground on the airframe. The other one is the positive. The only cable I didn't replace is this red one you see right here. That is the one that goes from the starter solenoid all the way up front to the starter. And I didn't replace that one because I can't really get down in there to cut the zip ties and route the new cable without taking the side panels off the airplane. Now luckily, because the lugs are bigger on the starter solenoid and the starter, this cable actually has the proper terminals on it, so there really is no need to replace it. And one of the reasons I didn't mind spending the 80 or 90 bucks to replace that starter solenoid is because what I didn't mention in episode one is that when I bought this airplane, my intention for this airplane was to get it flying, fly it while I finish my Super Duty project, and then when the Super Duty project is done, I want to completely restore this airplane, cut off all the fabric, completely disassemble it, sandblast the airframe, repaint it, just it would be a brand new airplane when I'm done with it. So that's my ultimate goal for this airplane. So I figured at that point anyway, I'm gonna put a new starter solenoid on it just to have a new one. So what's the difference if I replace it now or later? All right, moving on. The next thing I wanted to do was beautify this air intake tube on the front of the engine. Now, yes, I know there's three bolts missing. I've already removed those. But I wanted to remove this piece, clean it up, and reinstall it. The first thing I noticed is that it does not sit flat. This bottom flange is a little bit bent. That was pretty easy to fix. I just took a hammer and kind of beat it down a little bit and flattened it out the best that I could. I never like to have sharp 90 degree corners on aluminum. And you can see the 90 degree corners on that plate. So I took it and filed it down and made them nice and curved. And then uh, when that was done, I scuffed up the entire tube to just to clean it up and then I had it powder coated and now it looks beautiful and it's ready to reinstall. There are two fuel drains on this airplane. One's on the wobble pump and the other one's on the fuel tank and they leaked a little bit and you can see they're old and don't look nice. So I drained all of the fuel out of the airplane 
and I replaced those with, with nice new uh, drain valves. With my fuel removed from the tank, I thought it would be a good idea to take a look inside the tank just because it's so old and I wanted to see if there was any dirt or sludge or anything in there. And I also wanted to take a look at the condition of the flop tube. And really the only way to look inside the tank is to get something like this endoscope. And this works very, very nicely to look inside. Now the timing was actually perfect because I just happened to watch one of Trent Palmer's videos and this is the one that he recommended. It worked fine for him so I thought I'd get on Amazon and order one. And I've been wanting one for a while anyway, just for other maintenance purposes. But it's really nice. It hooks up to your phone through Wi-Fi. And with this, I was able to insert it into the tank and take a look around. You'll notice that with this endoscope, it can record videos on your phone. And you can also take still pictures with it also. It works really nice. I think it was around 70 or 80 bucks. It's not very expensive. And if you guys want to get something like this, I will put a link in the description box below. All right, let's talk about the firewall forward now and why this is all torn apart. Now in episode one, I did mention that this airplane had sat around for quite some time, about 30 years. Now it was taken out, it was taxied, it was moved around and things like that. And you know, even though there's only 7.7 .7 hours on the airplane, it doesn't look brand new because there's a lot of hanger rash on it. There's some dings in it. There's some little rips and tears in the fabric. It's not in brand new condition, even though it's pretty much a brand new airplane. Now the problem with this airplane is there are no logbooks and no paperwork. So other than the oral history of this airplane from the seller, we have no idea uh, about anything else. We don't know how many hours are on the engine. We don't know how many hours are on the prop. Was the engine brand new when they installed it in the airplane? We don't know. Was the prop brand new? We don't know. There was an overhaul sticker on the prop, so it was overhauled at one point. Whether that was before or after it was installed in this airplane, we just don't know. So I had my mechanic come up, we went through the engine, everything looks good on the engine, it runs strong, it sounds good, it runs like a champ. But before I kind of buttoned everything up, I wanted to have the prop overhauled just because it was so old. And also, when we did run the engine, you could see the back of the, the prop blades were getting wet, so it was leaking from the seals. So I had the a &P come up, we removed the prop, I took it to Tiffin Air in Ohio, and a couple days later, they emailed me and told me that my prop is junk. They found some cracks in the blades. They found some cracks in the hub. And uh, for $17,400 plus shipping, they could get me a brand new prop for this plane. Now, it is pretty interesting. Here are the blades to the prop. They are stripped down to the bare metal. And I'm assuming where these red lines are at is where they found cracks. Now, I don't see any cracks or feel any cracks, but, you know, they have different uh, non-destructive non inspection ways to find that. So these blades you can see are red tagged and not airworthy. And you can also see the red tag on the hub. Now there's some red pen marks in there, which I'm assuming is, is where the, they found evidence of cracks. Uh, here's a, some parts here. And then these are all the good parts. Uh, so these are, these are reusable, but I don't have any use for them. I'm probably just gonna throw them in the recycle bin. All this stuff is good. It's really neat how they've cleaned these up too. I don't know how they strip the paint and everything off of these, but even things like the bolts and things like that are all cleaned up. It really looks nice. Now, it did cost me 600 bucks to have them strip this down and inspect it, but obviously that's money well spent because I don't wanna put a, uh, an unairworthy prop on the airplane. Well, now that the propeller is nothing more than a big paperweight, that gives me some things to think about for this airplane. Now, remember, I did say I wanted to completely restore this airplane, and I don't want to spend that much money on a propeller right now, so that gives me some options. Do I completely strip the airplane down now and restore it and just kind of enjoy that project? I would like to do that, but at the same time, I don't really want two projects right now. That would be the pits, and the Super Duty that I'm currently building. The other thing that's concerned me since I've got this airplane is that this is an E-Model airplane that is designed for a 180 horsepower engine and a fixed pitch prop. The 200 horsepower engine that I have in here plus that constant speed prop puts a lot of weight on the nose. And I'm a little bit concerned about the CG when it comes time to reweigh the airplane. Now there are other E-models flying with this combination, so I assume that it does work, but it is a lot of weight on the nose. 
Now I have decided that I am not going to pay that much money for a constant speed prop to replace this one. So my thoughts are to put a fixed pitch prop on it. And I kind of threw this out to the biplane forum and, and kind of got some other opinions. And it seems like everybody's opinion is that yes, this combination is pretty heavy on this airplane and I would be much better off putting a fixed pitch prop on it. Now obviously a fixed pitch prop is a lot less expensive than a constant speed prop. I can get a Sensnik ground adjustable prop for about $3,600, which is a lot better than 17 or 18,000 for a constant speed prop. But there are a few things I have to do to the engine to convert this over from a constant speed prop to a fixed pitch prop. Well, the first thing I need to do is seal up where the governor was, and I'll just need a gasket and a plate to do that. Lycoming does make a plate that bolts on there, so that's fairly easy. But the next thing I have to do is deep into the crankshaft, and I can't really get a picture there, but there's a plug somewhere right about back here in the crankshaft. And the guidance from Lycoming is basically to get a big spike and put it in here and poke a hole in that plug back there. And that lets the oil flow. And then in the front here, you just take a plug and plug that up. So doesn't sound hard to do, but I haven't talked to a single a and that has experience doing that. So I'm really not sure how to poke a hole in there. Literally, that's what, what Lycoming says is to get a a spike and just poke it in there and poke a hole in it. So that, it might be as easy as that, but uh, we've got to kind of figure that out first. Having gone through all of that, I now have some things to think about and some options for this airplane. One of the problems I have is that I bought this airplane last summer and I didn't fly it. This summer is almost gone and I didn't fly it. Everything I do takes way longer than I always think because for my job, I'm gone for more than half of the month. So I'm only home for less than two weeks every month. And to get this airplane airworthy, I need to have an A&P come out and convert over this engine. Who knows how long that's going to take. Like I said, I haven't even found an A&P yet that's familiar with how to do this. I have to order a prop. I don't know how long it's gonna to take to order a prop. It took me seven months to get my parachute. I have the parachute now, it's ready to go, but I don't wanna wait seven months for a propeller either. So my options are just keep plugging away at this and get it flying whenever it gets flying. Really all I have to do once this engine is converted over is put that prop on the front, button it up, do a weight and balance, and then have the FAA come out and inspect it. They would issue the airplane a new airworthiness certificate and uh, its limitations. And at that point, the airplane would be airworthy and I can go fly it. My other option I've been thinking about is what if I just bought another pits, a flying pits, not something that I would take the wings off of and trailer home. I mean, a pits that's ready to go. I'd have a pits to fly. And then since I have a flying pits, I could really take my time with this one and either just continue doing what I'm doing to get it flying, or I could cut the fabric off, take the engine off the airplane, completely strip it down and have a nice fun project to do. So I'm not sure which one of those I'm going to do yet, but that's what I'm thinking about. Hey guys, before I end this video, I just wanted to mention this airplane does not need fully restored. It's perfectly fine how it is. It's just that if you are familiar with my channel and me, you know that I am a builder at heart. And I look at this pits and I look at all the things that I can make better or shinier or new, just like the airframe. I'd love to sandblast that airframe down and, and repaint it just to make it nice, bright, clean white. There's so many chips in the paint on the inside from the seat belts going on and off. It's just things like that that make me want to restore this airplane. I would really enjoy that project. I would love to have a brand new pits. I'd put my own paint scheme on it. It would be fun to do, but yes, I realize this airplane does not need fully restored. It's just something that I, I kind of want to do. Okay, so with that, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you wanna follow the progress on this airplane and find out what I actually wound up doing with it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if there's an episode three, we'll see you there. Mm -hmm.